Welcome back to the junk room, everybody. You know who I am. I'm the junk man. I'm here to talk junk. And I'm really excited because today I get to talk to you about something I never get to talk about. And it's one of my favorite television shows. I hardly have anyone I can talk about this with. None of my friends have ever seen it. Most of the people I talk to online have never seen it. No one's ever seen it. It lasted four seasons and it's epic. It was a big hit over in the UK and it's called Blake 7. And this is where I tell you, if you want to support this channel, go to our Patreon page. Links is down at the bottom. And you might be asking yourself, Junkman, where did you get that cool shirt? Any toy collector in the 80s and 90s knows about KB Toys. Where did I get this great shirt? StarWarsJunk.net So if you don't want to support us on Patreon, you can always buy a shirt. That helps us out also. Or you can do both. Justify, stupid. First off, how did a southern boy in America discover this this British television show called Blake 7. Well, we'll go back to around 1987, maybe 1988, somewhere around then. What did a guy like me do when I didn't have the internet? I would lay in my bed and read Starlog magazine. Now, if you don't know Starlog magazine, this was the science fiction magazine to have. It told you all about the movies coming out. It was like the YouTube back in his day, right? When people bought magazines, Starlog was the one to have. And I still remember that my first issue I bought was in 1987, the anniversary edition of Star Wars. This is a great read for any Star Wars fan out there. If you see this issue, the 10th anniversary issue, buy it. Buy it. It's amazing. It's got stuff in it about Star Wars I didn't even know. And I still use it today to pull out and get references. So check it out. So there I was, reading Starlog magazine, reading all about the latest movies, when every once in a while they have an article about Blake 7. I didn't know what it was. I would flip through the magazine and see cheesy special effects and just laugh and laugh and laugh. I would say, man, look at this show. It doesn't look as good as Jason Star Command or it didn't look as good as Buck Rogers. And I never really gave it a chance, but then again, I couldn't really give it a chance. Not like I could have run out to Blockbuster and bought it on video and I surely didn't have the BBC. I didn't even know what the BBC was. But then sometime around 1988, my local PBS station started running Blake 7. And I still remember the day and time, 11 p.m. Sunday nights. And this was conflict because my parents wanted to watch the local news. I still don't understand. I'm 45 years old and I still don't want to watch the local news. But anyway, for some nights, they would go to bed early and me and my brother would say, yeah, Blake 7. And then other nights, oh man, let's watch the news. Back then, people couldn't watch TV on the telephone because the phone was in the kitchen. It had this long string on it. No, we never even thought about watching the television on our phone. That would have blown our mind. But I did have a small black and white TV in my room. And I would put it on PBS. It would hardly come in. It would be all staticky. A lot of times I could just hear it. But that's how I would watch Blake 7 if my parents were up. Now, I'll be honest, when I saw it, I said, man, this looks cheesy. This looks stupid. Me and my brother watched it as a goof somewhere around the fourth season. Watched a couple episodes and said... This is some corny sh age. But then I remember they started over with season one. And I said, well, let me watch the first episode. And this time I actually pay attention to it. Instead of just laughing at how I can see a string on a ship or how cheap it looks. And you know what? What I discovered is probably one of the best written science fiction TV shows of all times. This is back before I was into the next generation. Sure, the next generation was already on the air. But it, to me, the next generation didn't really take off to about season three. Not sure what season it was in then because I didn't watch it. But this was far superior than anything I've seen before. Jason of Star Command, Buck Rogers, the original Battlestar Galactica, the classic Star Trek. This was amazing. And what I liked about Blake 7 is it wasn't just an episode after episode, kind of like Star Trek or any other show I was used to. It was more like a soap opera. Although each show had its contained story, it continued week to week. And it was a really fun show to get caught up in. Now, you're asking, what is Blake 7? Why do I like it? So, I'm going to run down all four seasons, and I'm going to tell you about the characters in there. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Junk Man, I've never seen this show, never heard of it. Uh, I'm going to cut it off. I'm not going to watch this video. I'll see you on the next one. And I knew when going into this video, it's probably going to get less views than most of my other videos, which not like I get 100,000 of them or anything. But I love the ones I get. Thank you for watching. But please do me a favor. If you don't know Blake 7 and you think about turning this video off because it's not really for you, please just watch the video. Listen to the descriptions of the seasons and its characters. And I bet, especially if you're a science fiction fan, you're going to be so intrigued that you're going to go and want to watch this. And the good thing, you can get all these seasons free on YouTube. 
And that's right. You can watch it, season one through four on YouTube. So before we get into the seasons, let's talk about who is on Blake 7. And we'll start with the obvious. Blake. Who is Blake? Blake is the rebel leader. He's the one that drives the show. He's the one that wants to get that evil federation. He will stop at nothing. I think before he was a rebel freedom fighter, he was an engineer or something like that. Again, I haven't seen the show in years, so please, if you're a Blake 7 fan out there and I say something stupid, forgive me. But anyway, he's the heart of the show. He's the one that makes the crew follow. He's the one that wants to destroy the Federation. And when you pick up in episode one, he's being charged with child molesting. Yes, this was a show in, what, the late 1970s, 78, 79, dealing with child molesting. Now, what did the Federation do when they captured Blake? They had to discredit him. They couldn't just throw him in jail and let him become a martyr. So what did they do? First, they wiped his memory, and then they charged him with child molesting. So you know everybody started to hate him. But anyway, that's Blake. And who else do we have? My favorite all, Avon. And what's his story? He's a computer wizard. He can fix somebody anything, and he's really good at hacking into computers. In fact, when we meet up with Avon, that's why he's in prison, for trying to steal millions of credits from the Federation's computer system. So like Blake, he's also now a prisoner of the Federation. But unlike Blake... He has, no, he has no desire to fight the Federation. He only cares about himself, no one else. He is the rogue of all rogues. And then we have Villa. Kind of the bumbling idiot of the show, but a lovable idiot. But he's also kind of an alcoholic. And his special skill is a thief. He can pick any lock there is. Although he's kind of the coward, he does have a high IQ. Now, kind of like Avon, he's not really into the whole fighting the Federation thing. But he sees the group as kind of a family. He's loyal to Blake and his calls. He'd much rather be sitting in a bar somewhere or picking a lock, but he's got a family, so he stays along with the group. The other is Callie, who kind of acts as the medical chief of the crew. She's a doctor, and she's the only one that is not wanted by the Federation. She's not in prison, and she's also a telepath. And then we have the hot Jenna. Woo, drive me crazy back in the late 80s. And she's a great pilot, and even better, a great smuggler. She, like Callie, believes in the calls. Although, given freedom or fighting for their federation, she'll run at any second, just like most of the other people in Blake's crew. They're only really a part of the crew because it keeps them from going to prison. And then we have Gan, a gentle giant. He looks menacing, but he's not. He killed a federation officer, so what did the federation do? Well, uh, they put something in his brain so he can't attack anyone. If he tries to beat up or attack anyone, he's dead. So you got the big old brute that really can't do that much to fear if he... Accidentally kill someone, he's gone too. Then you have Dana, very skilled with weapons. If there's a weapon out there, she knows how to use it. And we round out Dale Tarrant, the only member to be a part of the Federation. He's kind of overconfident and, and at times during the show run, thinks he's the leader of the group. Hey Tarrant, the show's called Blake 7, not Tarrant 7. I love him, but I hate him also, you know what I mean? And at la and last, we have the mysterious gunfighter, Su Lin. Watch out for her. Now, Su Lin didn't join the show until the final season. Like Dana and Tarrant, they joined in season three. But all together, that makes up the crew of Blake Seven. But you also have two more. But they're computers. The first up is the most famous of them all, Orac. The all-knowing, all-seeing, all-everything computer. The greatest computer there ever was. And portable, although it's like walking around with a suitcase, is Orac. Flashing lights and kind of a smart-ass attitude. Aboard their starship, the Liberator, Zen rules it all. You're not going anywhere without communicating to Zen. And that's the crew of Blake Seven. Along for the ride also, you have the leader of the Federation, Silverlant. Silverlant, I think I said that right. And the evil Travis. Here and here, two different actors, same character. Not really sure why they swapped. Didn't get into the whole backstory of that. I was too busy just watching the show. He has one eye and a laser gun for a hand. How can you beat that? But let's talk about the show. Let's look at season one. Now, I haven't seen this show in a long time, and I'm going mostly through my head. I did kind of look up some stuff. Now, I did look up some stuff, but if I say anything wrong or crazy, and you're a Blake 7 fan, let me know. Again, I'm trying to remember a lot of this out of the top of my head. I know it seems like I write and research all these videos I make. No, I just turn on the camera and start talking. Now, as I said, Blake was arrested by the Federation. Mind wiped and charged with child molesting, among some other things. While in prison on Earth, he meets Jenna and Villa, strike up a friendship with them, and then they're off on the prisoner ship called London, headed to the prisoner planet, where they spend the rest of their life. But on that ship, they meet up with Avon, and together they hatch a plan to escape. But the escape backfires, and they end up being caught. 
thrown into a cell, isolated from the rest of the prisoners. During this time, the prisoner ship, London, runs into an alien spaceship they didn't know nothing about. After a small fight, they dock with it and send Federation soldiers over to take over this alien ship. However, every time one of the Federation members enter the ship, they die almost instantly. They walk through the tunnel into the ship and you hear a scream. Next thing you know, a dead body. So what does the Federation do? They can't just keep sending soldiers into this new ship, risking everyone's life. Well, not Federation lives. So they get Blake, Avon, and Jenna to board the ship. So the gang heads to the ship, and thanks to Avon's great computer skills, they're able to knock out a security system that's killing the Federation officers that's been trying to come in. And now they have a ship, and they use it to escape. Where do they go? Well, Blake wants to head to the prisoner planet and free everyone else. Avon wants to get as far away from the Federation as he can. After some debating and bickering, they head to the prisoner planet. There, they free the prisoners, and newfound friend Villa and Gan return to the crew aboard their new stolen alien ship, which they have called the Liberator. And Blake wants to use this powerful ship to attack the Federation, and they do. They start blowing up bases and attacking little small things here and there, and after a while, the legend of Blake grows, and you have a bunch of other small rebel groups popping up. The Federation doesn't know what to do. Finally, people have hope. These smaller groups even attack in the name of Blake. He's become, he's become some kind of a cult hero. That encourages a lot of other groups to pop up. Fearing that something has to be done and soon, Federation Supreme Commander Servalant has a plan. She gets Space Commander Travis to hunt down Blake. Now, him and Blake have a bad relationship already. Well, Blake took his eye, some of his brain, and his arm. Their plan? Find the Liberator, destroy Blake, put an end to all this rebel uprising. And season one finally comes to an end when Blake tracks down Orac, the all-knowing computer. With this computer, they'll know Federation ship codes. They'll know everything there is to know. At times, he can even predict the future. But he said that's more just of a cause and effect thing. However, when Blake gets there to pick up Orac, Servalent and Travis are already there waiting for him. Oh no! Will the all-knowing computer Orac fall into the hands of the Federation? Will Blake and his crew be caught? That season one ends you with a cliffhanger. So let's jump over to season two. And I'm gonna try hard not to talk about spoilers. So there might be some minor spoilers, but I'm gonna try my best to talk around any major spoilers. It starts off as Orac predicted back in season one, the Liberator's original alien owners return and they want their ship back. After a fierce fight, Blake sets his eyes on the next target of the Federation. There are computer bays on Earth. But when they finally make it to Earth to destroy the computer base and wipe out the computer network of the Federation, what do they find out? The base is empty. Nothing is there. Nothing but Travis and some Federation soldiers. Travis tells Blake that the computer system's been moved years ago. And they've only used that as a decoy because they knew rebels would be out trying to attack it. So the heroes escape, but sadly with one less crew member. And as we dig into season two, Travis is court-martialed for war crimes. But this just makes his anger for Blake grow even stronger. He's more determined than ever to find Blake. And Blake and his crew, what did they do? They finally tracked down the real computer base of the Federation called Star One. And when they get there, what do they find? It's already being attacked by an alien force. As the Federation fights this alien force, Servalant uses the chaos to make herself president of the Federation. She's no longer commander, now she's in charge of the whole damn thing. After a fierce fight inside the base, Blake is severely wounded by Travis, but they manage to escape back to the Liberator to find the alien ships has turned their focus on the Federation, about to destroy the Liberator and its crew. And not only are the crew of the Federation aboard the Liberator this time, also Federation President Servalant. She's with them also. How she got there, you'll just have to watch the show. And that's how we end season two. As season three starts, we all can't wait to finally get those answers we've been waiting for. How would the Liberator escape? What would happen to the Federation now that Serverland has made herself president? And what about Blake's wound? Is he gonna survive? Now I can't talk much about this season without giving a lot away. Cause season three is a major change to the series. It shakes up a lot. However, I'll say the crew does pick up two members. However, the Liberator crew do pick up two new crew members with Tarrant, a former Federation officer himself, and a weapons expert, Dana. 
and the season comes to an end where President Servalant sets a trap for the crew by using bait that she knows Avon can't resist. Once they've been captured, Servalant wants the Liberator all to herself, and Avon turns it over. But don't worry, like Avon always has, he has a plan up his sleeve. And that's how we end Season 3, and we're off into Season 4, the final season. And it's time to shake up the show again. It's hard for me to talk about this season because it's so different than the season before that. Anything I say about this season will almost spoil the past seasons. But I'm going to try my best. The Federation's main focus is no longer trying to track down the Liberator crew. They have too much internal problems going on themselves. So now, kind of free, or at least not really being chased down, the crew head to the planet Exxon. And what do they find on this new planet besides a base? They find an army and a new crew member. They make an alliance with all these other rebel groups. And finally, they have a team. Finally, it's not a crew of misfits anymore. They now have the numbers and the army they need to fight the Federation once and for all. And with the Federation already weak and dealing with political power issues, this is the best time to crush the Federation. However, when one newfound friend betrays everybody, the army is wiped out. However, when the newfound friend betrays everyone, their hopes for this grand army fades away until Avon reveals he has a new hope. A new hope. No, it's not Luke Skywalker. Thanks to Orak, Avon has tracked down a mysterious man that can lead them into a whole new era. A man, just by his name alone, will bring people to fight for the cause. They will give their life and blood fighting in his name. So they track down this mystery man to a lawless planet to find out he may not be the hero they thought. As it turns out, he's a bounty hunter. And, although not being chased by the Federation, but there's still a hefty price on their heads. And then, they find out one of their own crew members, one of the main characters from the cast, has turned on them. But before they can really do anything about that, the Federation shows up, guns in hands. A massive gunfight breaks out, and the crew are very outnumbered. And as the final episode ends, one crew member stands over a lifeless body. As Federation soldiers surround him, aiming their gun right in his face. He raises his gun, gives a quirky smile, and then it fades to black. The end of season four. The end of Blake Seven. Now, whew, whew, one of the best endings I've ever seen, although you're gonna be crying and screaming for more when you see what happens. But that's a look at Blake Seven, from the characters to the all four seasons. Again, if you've never heard of this show, I highly recommend you check it out. Like I said, you can see every episode on YouTube for free. But just don't go too deep looking ahead. This show is at its best when it has surprises. And I'll admit, it looks cheesy. If you Google it and just try to look at some pictures, you'll probably look at pictures and say this looks like crap. But I assure you, if you're a science fiction fan, you'll love this show. But I want to thank you for watching. Again, I knew this video might not get everybody's eyes on it, but it's not something I get to talk about a lot. So it was really fun for me just to talk about this show and share it with you. I mentioned it on Twitter and some people said, hey, I don't know about this show. Let me check it out. And that's what I was hoping to do here. Maybe, so maybe you haven't seen it and you'll go look it up on YouTube and you'll watch. If you watch it, let me know. Come back, comment, send us an email. Let me know what you think about this. Watch season one or just watch the pilot episode. And let me know what you think. But that's it. I want to, again, thank you for watching. You know to go to StarWarsJunk.net. You know to go to Patreon to help us support. You know where to get cool kick-butt shirts like this and like these or these. But you're done with this video. And But anyway, I'll be back when the week is new and I'll have more videos for you. And I'm sure you'll have things you want to talk about. I will too. Thank you for watching.
Mr. Ratchet, Mr. Ratchet, Mr. Ratchet. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.